Trinity Episcopal Church in Arkansas City, Kansas. We're very glad that you have joined us for Sunday worship. Our worship today is Holy Eucharist Rite 2 with spiritual receipt of communion. Today is June 28, 2020. The congregational responses for our worship service are going to be printed on the screen, but you may also download a copy of the bulletin if you would like, either at the address below or in the description of this service. Let us begin with our opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join our voices together to pray the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah, beginning in the 28th chapter and the 5th verse. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and the great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 89. We will pray it in unison. Your love, O God, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. 
They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Our second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning in the 6th chapter and the 12th verse. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching of which you are entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For you, for just as you once presented your members as slaves of impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. 
And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We gather together in the name of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was preparing for this morning's sermon and read about welcoming people, it immediately put me back to an occasion when I was probably in my tweens. I was 11 or 12 years old. But my mother told my sister and I that we were going to have important company. These were going to be some people from my father's work, and that whatever was going on, we had to be sure the house was clean, things were in order, a nice environment, because they were important. So whatever happened here, the people that met with my father were going to take it back to the boss. So there was a relationship here. And we had to really have things in good shape. I thought about that because the idea of welcoming. When we welcomed these people who came to talk to my father, we also welcomed those that sent them on their behalf. They welcomed the boss. And this is what today's gospel is talking about. In the ancient world, the culture, the Hebrew culture, was very tied to family. People knew you by your family and your family relationship. And your place in the community was defined then by your family, but then people knew you by your community. And it was very, very strong ties. And so when somebody went out and was traveling and they needed a place to stay, they would welcome them based on the community they came from, and the family. And how they welcomed that individual also reflected on how they ex accepted and respected and cared for that family and that community from which they came. Likewise, a messenger. When a messenger went out with some words, unlike my kids, yeah, you, you, you tell the kids, go tell, go tell your brother and sister, mom says it's time to get your room clean. That didn't have very much weight. But in ancient times, when a messenger went out, the messenger was the representative and was seen as the same as the one who sent the messenger, the one who sent them. Now, this gospel reading today comes at the end of, um, well, the past two weeks. It's Jesus' mission discourse. Jesus is preparing his disciples to go out and carry on the mission that he has started. They are to go out to, do, to heal, to cast out demons, to raise people from the dead, and to proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near. And when they go out, they are not to take money with them, anything extra to eat or wear, and they are to rely upon the hospitality of those who they go to visit. Jesus is preparing them, and Mother Lori has been explaining to us the last couple weeks about the challenges Jesus says you are going to face. Not all are going to accept you. And so if they do not accept you, 
wipe the dust from the seat, from your feet, and move on. And so today, there's so much rich in today's gospel, but what I really want to focus on is that very first line. Whenever, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one that sent me. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. That me is Jesus. Jesus is saying, if they welcome you, they're welcome me, Jesus. And they're welcoming my Father. He is the one who sent me. Now, I have had an easier time welcoming others. I encounter people, and I do. I see the face of Christ. Knowing that these people, each one, a beloved child of God. And I could easily and very comfortably believe that Jesus when I welcome them, I'm welcoming in Jesus and God the Father. But listen to this. It says, whenever they welcome you. And think of this. Whenever they welcome me. When somebody welcomes me, when I come in the name of Jesus, they are welcoming Jesus and God his Father. With that comes great joy and I also feel the responsibility of it. How do I walk in and bring Jesus with me? My mother once told me that everyone has a throne, this ideal throne, and they put things on this throne. If you put anger on that throne, anger is going to rule. If you put selfishness on that throne, selfishness will rule. Materialism, materialism uh, desire for power, longing for prestige, whatever we put on our throne, that's going to rule what we do, how we act, how we perceive ourselves and others. Every morning, I wake up praying, Jesus, you are my king. You are the one on the throne. Help me remember this. I am not perfect, and there are times that I allow other things literally to metaphorically move Jesus over and I put something else up there but when Jesus says when somebody welcomes you when someone welcomes me I'm coming in with you the only way I can do that is by keeping Jesus on the throne but I'm not perfect I'm not perfect So that's when we get into the reading from Romans today. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. That's all the other stuff I let on the throne sometimes, that sin. Sin is when we're not fulfilling the will of God. How can I keep from being sin-free, sinless? can't do it alone I need God's help I need the power of God's loving Holy Spirit with me to remind me I need the grace of God to set me back when he does when I get off track Jesus says hey that's my seat it's taken okay oh yeah I remember and I need scripture I turn to scripture when things get really hard. And I was thinking about the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians. He instructs us that when we are fighting evil, we are to put on the belt of truth. 
around our waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We have a God who loves us so much that Jesus came to teach us and show us what we can do when we walk in his name and he walks with us as God his Father is with us too. He, after his death and resurrection, he sent the Holy Spirit that we may never be alone. And then when we give his feet away to something else, to sin, he has the grace to say, excuse me, Kathy, that's my seat. I'd like to sit on your throne. This is Jesus who loves us so much. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now profess our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We pray for the right Reverend Kathleen Bascom, our bishop, and in, in the Diocese of Kansas. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the United Church of, Church of Pakistan. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. In Kansas cycle of prayer, we pray for the St. Michael's and All Angels Mission. Raise up among us prolific voices of peace that we may proclaim your marvelous work. Your love, O Lord, I will sing forever. Assist us in laying claim to the free gift of eternal life given in Jesus, that we might receive the advantage of sanctification and present ourselves as instruments of righteousness. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. Make us people of hospitality and welcome, extending to others the grace that has been shown to us in Christ Jesus. Your love is established and your faithfulness is firm.
we pray for all who seek a greater knowledge of the divine that you would be that you would accomplish your own work within and assist them to a place of hope respite joy and growth we walk O oh Lord in the light of your presence encourage the downcast and strengthen those who seek who are weak heal the sick Lord Christ bind up the heart, broken hearted comfort the dying and minister to all who mourn that we might together rejoice in your provision please offer your intercessions we will be jubilant in your righteousness open our minds and make ready our hearts that we may offer a cup of water to the little ones of yours in the name of the disciple happy are the people who know the festal shout Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you and also with you. Again, good morning, and like Mother Kathy, I want to welcome you to this space at Trinity Episcopal Church in our Kansas City. Um, we really appreciate you tuning in uh, to worship with us virtually today. Um, I know it seems silly to say, but please like this video, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, the channel is Episcopal Churches of Grace and Trinity. Um, on YouTube, so youtube.com, and um, then you can click the little bell while you're there and you'll be notified as soon as any new video is made available um, by, on our channel. And then please like and, or follow us on our Facebook channels, facebook.com slash Grace Episcopal or facebook.com slash Trinity Arc City. Um, we would love to stay in touch with you. And then, of course, please consider giving to support the kingdom work that we are carrying out. Even though we're not gathered together in this space every Sunday morning, we are still working hard for God's kingdom. And you can support our ministries by mailing a check to our P.O. boxes, which are found on our websites, winfieldepiscopal.org, or arccityepiscopal.org. 
and you can give, if you'd like, rather give using a credit card, you can do that through our diocesan webpage, which is episcopal-ks.org. Then you scroll down to the section titled Online Giving for Churches of the Diocese. Then simply follow those instructions and you uh, can even make a recurring donation there. Um, I uh, want to remind you that even in this pandemic, however long it takes, we are planning to give away free blankets this coming winter in our new blanket ministry. This ministry had, has its origins at St. Jude's Episcopal Church in Wellington, uh, a fellow, uh, a sister church in our minster of the diocese. And so each of the minster churches this year are taking it on to give away uh, blankets. Last year, St. Jude's gave away 300 blankets. We know the need is there, and helping someone to be warm is an easy thing we can do. But here's the thing. Now is the time for us to apply for grants to fund this blanket ministry. And one of those grants will be a matching grant from the diocese from their Alleluia Fund. Please consider sending donations of seed money to us, to the blanket ministry, so that we have funds to be matched by the Alleluia Grant. Donations can be mailed to the church PO boxes with blankets in the memo line. And uh, we thank you in advance for considering helping with this ministry. Then as winter approaches, then we'll start getting blankets and getting prepared to give those away. Finally, I have announcements about our next steps during this pandemic. Our in-person worship uh, was abruptly suspended at the beginning of the pandemic. Just a reminder, starting March 22nd, we began pointing all of our parishioners to the Washington National Cathedral website for Sunday morning worship. Um, I knew there would be a great learning curve in producing worship, and they already had it. So for Lent and Easter, we all um, we were encouraged to watch their worship. And then we would gather using Zoom technology for virtual coffee hour each Sunday morning for um, our community life. Then starting May 24th, I began producing our own online worship content for Sunday mornings and continuing still with our virtual coffee hour. And as predicted, there has been a learning curve for sure. Uh, video production televangelism, if you will, was not a class taught in seminary. Um, on May 31st, so just a, a week later, I announced my decision that we would continue with uh, video worship and virtual coffee hour through the month of June, even though at that point there had only been five positive cases of COVID-19 in Cowley County. I just felt like we were just getting started with learning this and wanted, wanted more time um, to develop this new form of evangelism. The next day after making that decision on June 1st, the community spread in Cowley County of COVID-19 began a rapid uptick and it has not stopped. As of this recording, um, there have been 66 positive cases in the county. Yet, I find as we are at the end of June, it is now time for that next decision point. I want to tell you a lot has gone into this decision. I've been closely following the science as the research continues uh, to learn more and more about this particular pandemic virus. It's clear that the most likely way to contract COVID-19 is by being indoors with an infected person, especially someone that doesn't know they're sick. And being indoors for a period over 15 minutes puts you at a high risk of breathing in that virus. So if we were to gather in our churches for worship, even if we stayed physically distant in the space, we would still be indoors sharing our air with one another for at least an hour. Even with masks, I am not willing to take the risk 
of putting anyone's life in danger, um, especially as we would then carry it out into um, our, to our other neighbors, especially the employees at grocery stores that have to work and in a long shift are breathing a lot of air of folks that they have no control on how they're behaving. But I, I am sensitive to the pastoral needs of parishioners who are aching to be together in prayer and worship once again. So I'm taking all of these things into account. At the same time, I do not want to take away the quality Sunday worship that we're starting to learn how to really produce well that includes singing and, and all that joy. I don't, I don't want to take that away from those who are cautiously staying isolated to help stop the spread of this disease. One more factor that's in the mix of this decision is the huge amount of time and energy that it takes to produce the quality worship for Sunday mornings. I don't want to just produce enough. It's important that this is a form of evangelism for us. So filming it and editing it and adding the music and having quality worship is very important. But the schedule that we're keeping is not sustainable as far as burnout factor. So in consultation with the other clergy of our parishes, Mother Kathy and Deacon Karen, I've made the following plan. Beginning next week, the first Sunday of every month will now be National Cathedral Sunday. So this will give us one week without the extra 15 to 20 hours of work that goes into producing the video worship. And it will still give that quality, beautiful worship, and the cathedral has been so generous in uh, sharing their resources with us. Um, this will, we will also then use that as a, a reset point to start recording the video one week in advance. So next Sunday, you're watching the National Cathedral worship, but we will have recorded and we'll be starting the editing process for the Sunday, July 12th. So this will reset our schedule. Um, okay, so then the next advance in this new plan will be um, how I wish to answer that pastoral need for those whose heart's desire is to get back to praying with fellow parishioners in person. As I said, I am not willing to take the risk of bringing people together inside. And so on the evening of Sunday, July 19th at 7 p.m., we will begin holding lawn chair evening prayer in the courtyard at Trinity Arc City. And this will give an opportunity for those who are aching for that in-person worship to come together, to sit outside where it's much safer uh, to share a space with one another. And we can pray the uh, wonderful and ancient evening prayer liturgy, be together. Um, we can have that camaraderie and catch up with one another. And yet, I will still be able to maintain then the, the video schedule so that we can produce and put out on the internet a beautiful full worship with music and all um, to be shared around the world. And so that is the next step that we plan to take. A, a letter will be going out this week to explain all of this in detail, but I wanted to tell you first. So you are the first to hear uh, this decision. And I pray that this next phase in our lives together, I pray that it will carry us through to when we can once again safely be together indoors. And we will reevaluate again as Things change as we go forward. We'll reevaluate and share that with you. Now, it is our custom to pray for those with birthdays and anniversaries. And our birthday anniversary prayer is found on page eight of the service booklet. Or I'll share the words with you on the screen. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. 
Look with favor, we pray, on your children as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's turn our hearts and minds to the altar of the Lord and Holy Communion. Today we are partaking of spiritual communion, that during these extraordinary times when we cannot come together in person to physically receive the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, that we can spiritually ask Christ to grant us the grace that comes from this sacrament. We continue with our offertory sentence. If we are baptized in Christ, then we have died with Christ. And if we have died with Christ, then we also are raised with him. So we who are in Christ are new persons and inheritors of everlasting life.
we continue with the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a perfect example of how we should live in love and sacrifice for others. We are to welcome and provide for one another in his name and in so doing, we honor you and receive the reward of righteousness by your heavenly grace. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we glorify your name and join with them in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us join together in a prayer for receiving spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. We continue with our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Thanks be to God.